Hello and welcome to worship for this first Sunday at Lent at Our Savior's Lutheran Church here in Rockford, Illinois. Good for us to be together. Whether you've been a member of Our Saviors your whole life or you're just joining us online for the first time, we're glad you're here. I'm Rob James, senior pastor. Grateful for Pastor Scott Stolberg, our assisting minister, musicians, staff, everyone who makes it possible for us to worship in this online way. As we get ready to worship, we want to invite you into a little game we like to call, How Many Different Outfits Is Pastor Rob Going to Wear in Worship Today? With recording music and liturgy and sermon at different times, you're going to get to see most of my wardrobe. And so be the first to comment on Facebook at the end of the service with how many different outfits I won, and you might just be surprised with me at a, with a prize at your front door. So pay attention throughout the whole service. But while we're talking Facebook and comments, we want to invite you to do two other things. If you look down that way, there's a share button. We want to invite you to click on share. You're going to share the service onto your newsfeed. Here's why. If you've found joy in following Jesus Christ, if you've found comfort and peace knowing that Christ is with you through the challenges that you've lived with in life, why would we not want to tell all of our friends about that? We have this great tool in social media. You have a ton of friends that aren't connected to a community of faith. And this is a way to simply let them know that they're invited to join you, especially in this easy, comfortable setting of online worship. So imagine, say there's 60 of us watching worship right now, and each of us shared it. Say all of us had 100 friends on Facebook. Well, now we've got 6,000 people that we can share this message of good news with. The reality is that most of us have way more than 100 friends and that it can go a lot further. And so it's a way for us to simply use the tools we have to proclaim this good news of joy in Jesus Christ with our friends, our family, those that we're connected with. So we invite you to click that share button and tell others that you would love for them to join you here at Our Saviors if they don't have a community of faith they're a part of. While you're at it, you'll see the comment button on Facebook. We encourage you to comment. Just say hi. Let us know you're here. It's a way that we connect as community, even though we're not physically together in this space. And so when you see others that you know say hello, say hello back. When you see people that you don't know, you can still say hello back. Engage in the comments as we go through this time of worship together. Before we worship, we do just want to share a few announcements. First off, I want to say thanks to the staff, everybody that made it possible for us to do Ash Wednesday a little different this week. It was not our normal Ash Wednesday, and yet it was a beautiful day. The online service, of course, is still posted. You can find that and watch it, participate if you haven't done that yet. But it was great to have people drive up for this individual confession of litany. I'm grateful to have had the chance to see many of you and and be together as we heard those words. Remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. But as we also remember that God breathes life into dust. If you came on Wednesday, you likely picked up your Lent in a bag. But if not, it's still here for you. And so come on by any time during the week, Monday through Friday, when the office is open. We'd love to have you hand you a Lent in a bag. It's got a great Henry Nouwen devotional, but a whole lot of other things that Miss Cindy has put in there and created to take us as a community together through this 40 days, the season of Lent that takes us toward Easter. So stop by, grab it. If you need us to simply call, email the office, let us know, and we will deliver it to you as well. Happy to get you that as we're in this season of Lent together. Playtown Preschool, our preschool here of our saviors, uh, things are going well, and we want to encourage you to spread the word. Uh, we're doing a virtual open house. We do do one-on-one -on -one tours as well, but we're doing a virtual open house for those with three and four-year-olds, two three and four-year-olds that are looking for a preschool for next fall. And so if you've got somebody in your life that's looking for a preschool, let them know that Playtown will have a virtual open house on March 13th. We'd love for them to be here. I just want to highlight our mission of the month, Habitat for Humanity. You're going to hear us rolling out soon a training that we're going to host here at Our Saviors from One Body Collaborative on their Bridges Out of Poverty training. I hope that you'll participate when you hear some more information on that soon. It's coming down the road. But in that, we're going to hear about generational poverty. And we know that one of the best tools to help people move beyond generational poverty is safe, secure, affordable, permanent housing. 
I don't know of anyone that does that better than Habitat for Humanity. We've got an amazing branch in Rockford area, Habitat for Humanity. We're grateful to be partners. In fact, our council already designated $2,500 in estate gifts to go to Habitat this month. How awesome would it be if we could actually send a check for over $5,000? So I hope if you're able to give above and beyond your regular giving, you'll consider our mission of the month, Habitat for Humanity. Simply make your check out to Our Savior's Lutheran Church, and in the memo line, write Mission of the Month, Habitat for Humanity. Mail that in, drop it off. You can also give online at oslcrockford.com. It's a great way for us to go beyond ourselves to be in mission and ministry for our community. With that, there's other stuff I encourage you to check out in the this week that you should have been emailed, especially look at the Wednesday night gatherings that we'll, I'll be doing with you uh, throughout Lent. Would love for you to join me on Zoom. With that, we worship in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock, and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the Spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace by the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and the power of God your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm going on a journey, and I'm starting today. My head is wet And I'm on my way Christ's mark is on me It's on you too It says he loves me And he loves you too In this day, a saint of God, it doesn't really matter what roads I've trod, wherever I go, God's been there too. Love has touched me and will carry me through. There are other saints who have said, Amen. They'll keep me faithful to my journey's end. Along the way, I want to be the kind of person that God sent for. Sisters and brothers in Christ, beloved children of God, Grace, mercy, and peace be with you all. And also with you. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Amen. 
Let us pray. Holy God, Heavenly Father, in the waters of the flood you saved the chosen, and in the wilderness of temptation you protected your Son from sin. Renew us in the gift of baptism. May your holy angels be with us, that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is Genesis 9. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a, of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember that the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We know that worship is not just sitting. Worship involves our whole self, our whole body, our whole soul. And so for this psalm, we need you to get a little involved. We know you're already sitting in your sweatpants. You're at home. Nobody other than the people that love you can even see you. So why not do what the kids would do at camp, right? This is Psalm 25, and the verse has some motion. So it's going to go like this. Higher than the mountains, deeper than the sea, wider than the ocean. Just move your neck. Wider than the ocean is your love for me. You're with me on the mountains, in the valleys below. You are right here beside me, everywhere that I go. So you've got that, it's easy. We worship God with our whole selves, let's worship. To you, O oh Lord, I lift up my soul. To you I trust, O oh Lord. To you, O oh Lord, I lift up my soul. To you I trust, O oh Lord. Higher than the mountains, deeper than the sea. Wider in the ocean is your love for me. You're with me on the mountains and the valley below. You are right here beside me everywhere that I go. To you, oh Lord, I lift up my soul. To you I trust, oh Lord. To you, oh Lord, I lift up my soul. To you I trust, oh Lord. Wider than the ocean is your love for me. You're with me on the mountain and the valley below. You are right beside me everywhere that I go. To you, oh Lord, I lift up my soul. To you, I trust, oh Lord. To you, oh Lord, I lift up my soul. And you, I trust, oh Lord. The second reading is from 1 Peter. Christ also suffered for sins once for, the, for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prisons, who, for, who in former times did not obey. When God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water, and baptism, which is 
prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of the dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone to the heaven and at the, is at the right hand of the God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. and spirit love filling the air. Jesus our Lord is the light of the world. Honor and praise him in our worship. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God, our creator, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit who moves in and through us with every breath we take. Amen. One more outfit for those of you that are counting. We haven't been wearing albs and stoles because uh, it's just one more thing to worry about. Does it need to be cleaned because of COVID? Uh, but nobody else is around and thought some of you might still be keeping count. So decided to throw one more outfit in here for you this week. But before I say anything else, I need to know who actually stood up at home and did the motions with us to Psalm 25. If you did uh, and you're watching us on Facebook, hit the, hit the heart, the love reaction. Let us know that you did it. If someone in your household made you get up and do it, then hit the laughing uh, reaction. Let us know that you did it only because someone made you. It was good to see some of you on Wednesday drive through for our Ash Wednesday event as we were able to gather in that way. It was good to connect and see faces and even meet some more folks uh, that are new to me. I'm coming up here on almost six months of ministry here at Our Saviors, uh, and so we're still trying to get to know each other. It's harder, obviously, when we can't be together, so it's good to connect where we can. If you didn't know before today, I'm always going to try to make you do silly things that help us connect with God and one another, even standing up at home and doing motions to a fun little silly song that help us praise our good God. Something else you maybe didn't know before today, I'm almost always thinking of the big picture and thinking ahead of the big picture stuff of what it means for us to be in ministry. And Yes, I spend way too much time thinking about the ministry that we're called into. However, paying attention to the details of what's coming tomorrow isn't always necessarily my specialty. For example, you maybe noticed that if you joined us for Ash Wednesday worship online, you heard me point backwards to January 24th in our text, our gospel text from that day of Mark chapter 1, verses 14 to 20. But our gospel text for today is Mark chapter 1, verses 9 to 15. I didn't realize that we were tackling this text again. To be fair, even though I'm coming up on 15 years of ordained ministry this summer, this is the first time that I've regularly used and followed the Revised Common Lectionary, this set of texts that we turn to uh, for our lessons for each Sunday in worship. So it's still a bit new for me. I don't have all those old sermons in my file like Pastor Scott can pull out and re-preach. Just kidding, Scott. But before we get to the gospel, 
Let's start with our Old Testament reading from Genesis 9. This story of God's covenant with Noah, his family, and all living creatures, this covenant that is marked with the sign between God and creation of a rainbow. What is a covenant? You've likely heard it described as a promise, but it's so much more. And this, in Genesis 9, is just the beginning of God's covenant with us, God's people. Keep reading to Genesis 15, and you will get this really weird story that probably doesn't make much sense. One of those Old Testament stories you're likely to just read right over. It's about God's covenant with Abram, who becomes Abraham. Rob Bell, in his book, What is the Bible? How an Ancient Library of Poems, Letters, and Stories Can Transform the Way You Think and Feel About Everything, helps us understand this Genesis 15 text and the covenant in it in amazing ways. But really, it helps us understand what it means to have a God who makes covenants with us, God's people. I wish I could just read you all of chapter 7, but I don't want to take all that time, so let me just read a couple portions. Rob Bell says, In the ancient world, the gods, now we're not talking God, we're talking the gods that were worshipped by others before, the gods were believed to be distant, detached, petulant, waiting for you to offer them sacrifices to appease their wrath and keep them on your side. That's how people saw the gods. Do whatever it takes to keep their favor. Offer whatever you have to sacrifice what is needed, to go whatever lengths you can to pacify the anger of the gods. But this story, in Genesis 15, is about a god who spends a lot of time insisting that this god has plans to do something for Abraham. The story is totally upside down. It's so new and fresh, we don't really have categories for how unheard of this sort of thinking would have been for its day. This story in Genesis 15 demonstrates how people in that day made an agreement with one another before there were lawyers and contracts. It was this public event with witnesses because failure to uphold your contract meant you would be cut in half like the animals that you had used in making the agreement before others. And God is making this contract, this covenant with Abraham. A little more from Rob Bell. He says, in this story, God commits to upholding both ends of the deal. Even if Abraham fails to do his part, this God will be faithful. This is a story about a human being having a relationship with a living God. This was a brand new idea in human history. But it's not just a relationship. It's about a particular kind of relationship with a particular kind of God, one who is good and kind and generous, one who can be trusted, one who can, keeps insisting, trust me, I got this. This story is about grace, trust, love, and hope. It is about a new understanding of God, a God Abraham is learning to trust more and more. This story is about an evolution in human thinking about the divine. I hope you were able to hear the power in just these couple of sections from this chapter. This covenant in that day was a new way of knowing God. All of us who've read this God story ever since, we read it as those who are learning to trust this covenant that the divine makes with us. But in that day, to those who are worshiping these other gods, this was a new way of knowing and thinking of God, not as some distant deity who you had to keep happy so that the punishment doesn't come, but a God who wants to be in relationship with us, a God who promises that even when we fail, God will remain faithful. God's story is a story of relationship and honoring the covenant that God has made with all of creation. So we move into the gospel of, and Jesus' baptism and God's spirit descending like a dove from the sky is sealing of the new covenant. This covenant that God continues to make with us, God's people, as Christ comes into the world for us. This living God comes to be with us and for us. 
Go back to our text from today again if you missed this in our reading from 1 Peter. But it connects the story of Noah and God's covenant made in baptism. Not just Jesus' baptism as we hear in the gospel, but your baptism. Because in your baptism, God made a covenant, an unbreakable promise from God's side with you. We celebrate two sacraments in the Lutheran church, baptism and communion where we take the things of this world, water, bread, and wine, and with God's word, we celebrate that Christ shows up for us in these holy sacraments. Why do we believe in one holy baptism? Because even though you were maybe baptized as an infant or young child or even older, and if you had some wild living years later in your life and feel like you need to make amends or recommit to your faith, the covenant was never broken because God will not let it be broken. No matter what you did, no matter where you went, no matter who you think you are or who the world has tried to tell you you are. God claimed you in the waters of baptism and said, you are mine, you are a loved child of God. And even when you couldn't uphold the part of the promise in that covenant, God kept making the promise. If you've never been baptized, let's talk. We want to talk about inviting you to these waters of baptism, to this promise, God's promise, a promise for you, a promise that is for all of us. But let me warn you, although the promise that comes through baptism comes with great benefits, it doesn't mean life becomes easy. I love what one commentary says on today's gospel. Immediately after Jesus is baptized, the Holy Spirit drives Jesus into the wilderness where he is tempted by Satan. Mark does not give us much detail, but even the outline is significant. Baptism does not make Jesus' life easier. Baptism does not fix things for Jesus. Just the opposite. Baptism complicates life for Jesus and for us. Baptism compels God's people to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. There are many of us, maybe you've still thought this, that believe that baptism is simply about the promise of what is. We treat baptism like that golden ticket. Well, we do it because we want to make sure that, that I or we, our child, whoever it is that we're bringing to baptism, gets the promise of eternal life. We want to make sure that they're baptized because of the promise of heaven. And yes, that is part of the promise that God makes to us in this covenant. But baptism isn't just about what will be someday. Baptism is about who we're called to be right here, right now, as children of the living God. Let me take just one more piece of our gospel reading. Mark 1, 14, 15 says, Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent, repent. And believe in the good news. Repent is to change, to change your perspective, to trust in the gospel that the kingdom has come near, that God is here in Jesus. This happens in that Kairos time. I've talked about this a little bit before already. Maybe you've heard it, this distinction before. When it says the time is fulfilled, the Greek word is not chronos, time we count on a watch or a calendar, but the Greek word is kairos, this holy time, those times when God breaks in, that time when grace is revealed, that time when you know you are fully loved. Maybe those times come with great dramatic flair, like an incredible conversion story, like when Saul becomes Paul in the book of Acts. Or it can be those times you maybe least expect it. Times that you don't even realize until you've gone through it. My prayer for our community as we begin this season of Lent together, leading us to Easter and the promise of resurrection is that we could carve out time, some chronos time, time in our day, time on our calendar, to sit, to be still, to set aside the distractions, 
to let God break in, that we might experience that kairos and know the good news of God's love. Amen. our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. In Jesus, your realm has come near to us in every place and time. Give your church throughout the world a spirit of humility and repentance. Teach us to trust always in the good news of your salvation. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. You have made a covenant of mercy with every living creature. Protect all Earth's create creatures from destruction. Empower the work of biologists, conservationists, and science educators. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. All your paths are steadfast love and faithfulness. Direct the words and actions of, uh, of leaders in our community and throughout the world, that they may maintain justice for the lowly. Hear us, O oh God. 
your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Even in the wilderness, you are with us. Walk alongside immigrants and refugees crossing dangerous lands. Tend to those whose lives feel desolate. Save healing and strength. Give healing and strength to all who suffer, especially. Gert, Fred and Lois, Gary, Bob, Dave, Henry, Sue, Marjorie, Lloyd and Nancy, John and Sally, Carol, Gary, Neil, Joan, Roberta, Marlon, Deb, Glendia, Paul, Ron, and Dennis. We also pray for families and friends of our Saviors. Phyllis, Gerald, Mike, Tim, Kelly, Chad, Brooklyn, Jill, Darren, Emily, Laura, Mike, Chris, Mike, Billy, Elijah, Glenn, Eva, Julie, and Daryl. And pray to comfort the family of Sharon Bew, who passed on February 16th. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. In the covenant of baptism, you claim us as beloved children. Nurture us in our baptismal identity and teach us to live within it for the sake of others. Strengthen this congregation's ministries of care and concern. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. In baptism, you join us to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We praise you for all those who have died, trusting in your faithfulness. Bring us with them to the fullness of your reign. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. We entrust ourselves and our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and, and also, also with you. you. Tree of life and awesome mystery, in your death we are reborn. Though you die in all of history, still you rise with every morn. Still you rise with every morn. We remember truth once spoken, love passed on through act. Lost and broken, where's the body of our Lord? Where's the body of our Lord? Christ, you lead, and we shall follow, stumbling though our steps may be. One with you in joy and sorrow, we the river, you the sea. The river you the sea. Light of life beyond conceiving, mighty spirit of our Lord. Give you strength to our believing. Give us faith to live your word. Give us faith to live your word. Faithful God, you walk beside us in desert places, and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. Accompany us in this meal, that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you, and, and also, also with, with you. you. We lift up our hearts. We, we lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to, to give our, our thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. 
through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Take the elements that you have gathered around you, bread and wine or grape juice, and either communing each other or communing yourself, hear these words. Take and eat, this is the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink, this is the blood of Christ given for you. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world have mercy on us. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in the true faith until life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of steadfast love, at this table you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world. Send us in the power of your spirit that our lives bear witness to the love that has made us new. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. And receive the blessing. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Amen. I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to walk with me all along my pilgrim journey. 
walk with me in my trials, Lord, walk with me in my trials, Lord, walk with me when my. Now, go in peace to love, share, grow, and inspire. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.